Okay, it looks like we're live, so welcome back. Today I'm going to be continuing to work on uh, the debugger for my programming language. So, basically, um, what we've got so far is if I run run this in debug mode, right, so db is the um, option I use to run in debug mode, I can run it on this file. So I actually going to this file is. Uh, so this file is code of my programming language, where it just initializes a few different types of variables, um, changes the value of a variable, reassigns the value, and then calls this, um, it's actually a syscall, um, a Linux syscall, right? It will call that. Um, so if I run that, and run it regularly, and x exit code is 13, which is what we would expect, if I run it in debug mode, it's going to show the assembly of it, right? And we can step through that. Hey, Stam, how you doing? Right, so push 12, that is the initial thing that it does. And Cactus resubscribed for two months at tier one. Thank you. Here, I can pop that out. Hang on, hang on. And I gotta read, gotta read the message. Uh, there we go. Let's go. Mm, America, yes, America. W. Thank you, Cactus. Just turn off your headphones and saw you started streaming, bro. Bro. Um. Okay. America. Let's go. Um. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, push 12, so that is the initial variable, and then it pushes the other variable, and then the string variable. We can actually look at the elements on the stack. So if we use the p command, it will show the stack. So first let's see, that's the current stack size. So we can print the top three. Uh, the strings, they don't really view properly because we don't know if they're strings. Uh, good timing, real. Yeah, so we don't know that they're strings, so we can't really output that. Uh, top 10 debuggers, easily, easily. I don't know that I can name like three debuggers, to be honest. Um, yeah, and then 12, right? So this is the stack. So this is the topmost element here. So the most recently push one, and this is the bottom. Uh, so we can keep stepping through, push one, subtract, right? And that's just reassigning the variable. And then we get to let's, uh, print the stack and print five. So that's the, what the stack looks like. We go here, and native is the syscall that we're using. So if we print one, that is the X code it's going to use. And then, um, I guess not. Top one, what the heck? Uh, strings are bloated, real, can confirm. Strings are bloated. Um, right, so maybe there would be like a way to do print, print string, right? If you knew it was a string, but I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> yes, I, I saw that. Uh, no, unless they're just an array of characters. Yeah, if they're not an array of characters, then they're not bloated. It's just a single character. That's my favorite type of string. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure how exactly we would free that out, because we don't have that information in the actual virtual machine. Uh, nope, no racism, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's pretty cool. So we have that. Um, there is a, an issue where it will print out, prints this out twice. I'm not sure why it does that, so I'd like to fix that. Uh, yep, is the goat, yes, the null, null termination character. Um, okay, yeah, so it does this. I don't get why exactly, so I'll need to figure that out. Um, and also I would like uh, breakpoints, right? So we don't actually have symbols at the current moment in the bytecode. I'd like to do that, um, where the labels, right, we generate labels. It'd be nice if they had symbols, and then we could do um, break on label. But for now, let's do break on a number, right? So it'd be the instruction. So you can actually do, um, we can uh, disassemble this, and this is, that's not how you do that. Mm, no, actually, you can't do it with this. I forgot. Uh, let me just implement that really quick, because that's going to be good. I would like to have that. Mm -hmm. Last streamer, you just came to say hi. Is it Kano Debugger? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, Well, really, it's for the virtual machine um, assembly that I have, right? So the bytecode for this, it displays the assembly of that, and you step through that. Uh, so it's not stepping through the Kano script code, but that's what the code compiles into, so you can use it for Kano script. Um, it's just, it's not... I'd like to get to the point where... Um, it, it does show um, the actual Kano script code, but that's going to be a bit um, out of scope for the moment. So this is what we have right now. It'll show the assembly. So like, um, I go, well, I see that. I go here, so we have this file, which compiles into um, into the code that is displayed there. So it's actually, um, it is this code. Hang on. Right. Uh, I need that one. Okay, that doesn't work. I don't know why. Uh, here, but I'm going to implement something so I can show it. Uh, can I use dead? I'm not sure. You'll have to ask Pra about that. Okay, so let's add... Uh, 
Let me add one, one more thing and then I can actually show the code. So this will be uh, this, right? This assembly. Then once you combine it, it's three and seconds, right? You can go with uh, the layout GDB has. They offer both C and assembly at the same time. You can write a decompiler to show the source code. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do something similar to that for sure, for sure. I don't know why I did in this order, but okay. I equals two. So if it is two, is that what I set it to? I set it to three. Yeah, it's kind of a weird layout, but it should be a switch statement. Anyway. Um, okay, so I don't want to, uh, I don't really want to do that. I want to just, um, I just want to do machine disassemble. Can I use this F real? I was in the shard VC the whole day today. Bro, how's that going? Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, so that should pretty much work. Mm, okay, and then if I do this on this one, there we go. So now it outputs it. So this is the, what the code looks like. Mm, Parser parse going good. Glad to hear it. Pro is not here. Rip pro. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like. So I can actually step through this. You can see it. This is the code. So we're stepping through it one at a time. It's actually executing and things like that. If I use a write syscall, let's do a write F. I can do that. And if I just run it regularly, you get that. If I disassemble it, you get this. And this uh, native call right here is the, um, that is the call to uh, write, basically. So I can look at it here and step through, and it's going to actually print it out. Mm -hmm. Omnipresent. Big word. Very big word. Uh, right, so it's going to do it here and do the native. And there we go. It did print out. It didn't print a new lineup, so that is a problem. Um, yeah, so I need to change sort of how the user interface is handled. I'd like to have a, uh, like a TUI, right? A TUI, what do you call it? Supercalifragilis is expialidocious. Real, real. Um, yeah, I'd like to have a TUI. I might use Incurses. Uh, I'm not sure exactly though. But for now, it's just like a CLI. Uh, yeah, let's go, let's go to this. Mm, Poppins, yeah, Mary Poppins. I am aware of that. I am aware of such things. This is a long switch statement. Don't, don't worry about it. Forget about it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And here, mm -hmm. yeah, so some of the printing is not quite great. So when we run the instruction, what do we actually run? Right there. What if I, um, But I don't want to have a bunch of extra new ones. Mm. Okay, so that is going to create extra new ones. Uh, but now when we do that, it's going to actually, yeah, it actually prints it out properly. What is the SS for? Oh, that is the current command. Okay, that's the current one. Uh, I haven't seen the bytecode your VM produces, what it actually looks like, and how does it get interpreted? Okay. Um, well, I can just do like a edit on the this right here. So this is the bytecode. Um, why is there so many zeros? Is this the right one? Let me, let me use a five. There we go. Okay, so that is, uh, this is it. I'm not, yeah, okay, there's a lot of zeros because it's all, um, it's not very efficient. So we'll say that. Um, yeah, we can see like there's a hello in here and things like that. And the, um, you actually look, you can either look in this file in here, which is the most up-to-date one, or you can go to the actual Tim repo, and it's in there as well. Um, and basically, these are all the instructions, and then there is just a, just a very big, um, switch statement, basically. Actually, it's up here. Yeah, this is a, it's a little messed up. The indentation got messed up, and I need to fix it. Um, I'll probably use a formatter. But it basically just interprets, um, interprets the, Bytecode by switching over the instructions and doing things. Um, and it's stack based. There is registers, but I don't use them, so I need to get rid of them. Because it's uh, it doesn't really make sense to use them with how it's laid out. Uh, but yeah, that's basically what it looks like. And that is what KanoScript compiles into, is that. Print does not equal native. No, print is a debug instruction. So it's not actually like meant to be used. Um, so KanoScript doesn't compile, it's just there for debug purposes, and I'll get rid of it when. When I'm done developing it, you know. Uh, looks like port. 
Does it? Well, I guess it, you could say it's similar. It's really more like an assembly, though. I mean, I guess port is kind of similar to that. But you can see, like, um, it's a bit outdated, but here's what the... Oh, so you can see the assembly from here. Like, if I run this... That is, um, that's it. So I guess you could see, I could see how it's similar to port, but that's just stack based, right? Are floats structs with everything before and after the point? Uh, no, floats are just stored as floats, as C floats. No, it wasn't JK, that was. Um, yeah, they're just stored, um, basically each thing has a type and it's a union. Um, like that. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Um, but I don't think it makes sense necessarily to do that because... I don't have to, so. Mm, right. Uh, yes, that's what I was doing. So I'm trying to get this to work. Um, so I need to change how I, how I do that. Go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Finish mine comcraft and start writing some real code. We're almost done, you said. So that's not quite right. Um, why does it do that? Hmm. Earthon CS Community Remake Incoming. Hmm. Uh, if we're gonna be super fast with Pra, might present it on Wednesday. Ooh. Wednesday. Um, I'm actually next weekend, so uh, Friday through Sunday, I'm going to be away. So I will not. Um, I won't really be using the internet at all during that time. So I won't. Uh, won't be there at that time. Uh, just so you know, I need to add achievements and a few entities. Okay. Mm, Wednesday, big word, real, the biggest word. Yeah, that is not. Good. So, um, internet is bloated on the weekend. True. It's actually bloated all the time. Mm -hmm. Why do you print two of the these things? Cobnet when real, real. Mm, I'd like to do something like that, to be honest. Uh, least bloated day is Friday. And, um, I don't know about that necessarily. Mm -hmm. Relay. Right. I think it really makes it. It doesn't fit at all. So why is it printing twice? I don't know how that works. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> C H T T P real, relatable or relay relay chair real, true very true. Okay. Uh, oh shoot, it's not going to be a character. I see. France true, relay France. Very true, very true. Why does it print two in the types? Is it is does it have to do with how it's reading it? Get a space there. Let's do let's do um Let me try something. It's like this. I'm just gonna run through it. I want to see what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't display that again. Best do with reading input. Um, today, today, found out this song smells like 
Toddler Spirit. Guess what it was. What? Uh, it sounds like a Nirvana fairy. Or something similar to that. Next. Next. So I need a new line before that. Yes, a remake. Okay, I see. A remake. Was it good? That's not, uh, that's not right. Uh, okay, that looks actually pretty good. What is this look like? Yeah, so that doesn't quite work. So that is an issue. Um, other than that, though. So how can I, uh, put a new line there, but then this is not going to quite work. Right. Mm, on the West Crab, anything you wish with Prada? Thoughts on that? It looked good. I thought it looked pretty cool. Uh, Nirvana fans say they hate Smells Like Teen Spirit, not to be like other Nirvana fans, and then secretly listen to it. Um, hmm. Do they really? I'm not very familiar with. The remake was awful, okay. I'm very familiar with uh, Nirvana fans. Uh, no bite code can be worse than JVM bite code. Um, I don't know. I should look into JVM bite code. Um, I remember uh, Mr. Zozin did that. Um, where you, you know, um, reverse engineered bite code. That was pretty cool. Well, I should do something like that. Hmm. I see. I guess that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and then there's just an extra new line, and um, I don't want that. But if the, if we output something, then I need to do that. Um, I put like an indentation in. Uh, JVM bytecode is open stand. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm aware of that. Why Zosin? Um, because it sounds, it's what it sounds like when you have a thick, uh, Russian accent. And you say Sodin. Right, that doesn't look very good, though. What if I do, what if I, um, output to, like, standard air? Skull. Yes. Um, cause... Uh, Mr. Zozin, if you watch some of his, um, older, like, streams and stuff, his accent was heavier. So that's what it sounded like, so then they started using that. Scooby. If I use that, it would be different. FNF, uh, standard air. You know, if you place it all. It's still heavy. Yeah, but it's not as bad, you know. Also, I'm much more used to it now than. Uh, where does Mr. Zosin work at? I don't know that he has a job necessarily. Um, I'm not sure though. You know, I don't know that he talked about. Hmm. So I don't know if he gets any money anymore, you know, with all the stuff going on. Um, but I don't know, I don't know necessarily the current state of that, so. He did used to write, um, Scala professionally. Donald's cashier, real. He's coding JS and pretends he doesn't know it. There we go. Alright, let me see.
Okay, yes, that's not gonna, not gonna, well, actually, if I fix that, I think I messed it up. Uh, okay, yeah, so this here. All right, like that. Yeah, so I don't really want to use, I don't want to use that. Um, I want to change it. You know how to use JS? All right, so let me change back. So we'll go back to because uh, that's gonna cause some issues, right? Um, just wanted to try. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at it. The worst thing humanity ever created. Um, I don't know that I go that far, but uh, not a big thing. Not a big thing. Um. 99% of it, yes, me as well. I was never good at it in the first place, so I forgot even the stuff that I wasn't good at. That didn't really make sense, but that's okay. Okay, so. Uh, needs to define functions as lambdas with arrow syntax to look cooler in JavaScript. Yes, well, everyone knows that. Right, I'll just put some sort of like barrier or whatever, and that'll be good for now. So if I do like a. Hmm, I'm gonna put dashes. I do like a 2e. Right, then I could, um, I could move the cursor around when we're printing stuff, and that would probably be better to do. But yeah, so that, I think that looks alright. And then when it prints it out, it's going to be there, and then dash. So, hmm, you can put instruction, I guess. Uh, never delved into it, but there's a function keyword. Why would you define a content variable and make it a lambda? I do not know. Yes, I, I don't know. Um, JavaScript kind of kind of sucks. Okay, all right, and that doesn't work, so that's a problem. Let's see, Java equals JavaScript. True, everything is an object. Yes. That's what we learned from the Theo stream, right? See, and that causes issues. Um, is it executing both? Theo, go for real. Can confirm. Why does it? Why does it do that? Um. Any object in Python is just a hash map. Is it actually? Wait, what? Really? What? Is that true? Is Chad? Is this Chad? Chad? Is this real? I've never heard of that. Of that before. Chad, is this real? Is it? I gotta look that up. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that's hash maps. Wait, hang on. Any objects in Python? How do I look that up? I don't know how to search for this. I, um, yeah. I don't know. You're going to have to provide a source for that. Type F-A-R. Yes, but then it thinks I'm talking about that. I don't know. We'll see, uh, 
We need cactus to provide the source. There's a method you can use to browse the object, which clearly makes similar to hash map. Like anything that the object has is stored in a hash map. I don't quite understand. Method you can use to browse the object, which makes it similar. What is the method? I'm not very familiar with Python, either, to be honest. Yes, I did not either. Wait. Alright, I guess we'll go without that. I'm going to show you. Alright, alright. Right, so it works without that. Uh, we turn off this. Five. There's not five. So can't do that. Okay. If I do with this as well. Whoa, 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 wait. Wait, what? Uh, oh, are you talking about what? Cactus. I see. Mm, yeah, I don't want to print that each, each time. Oh, yes. Okay, so I need to do... Uh, No sources. Fake news. Act this way. Yep. Common common politician. Am I right? Not quite right. It didn't print the uh, this. The this. That works so. I'm saying controversial, for real. Right. Uh, it's not a very clean interface, but I think that's good for now. You know what? That's why it did not work. Like, I meant to do that. I see. Okay, I used the wrong character. Big Brian. Big Brian. Uh, okay. Do that. And print two. Okay, there we go. That looks better. Yes, I need to space them, so I'm going to do a print F. Brian mentioned for real. Okay, do that two. Yes, looks good. Looks good. Okay, yes, that's uh that's pretty good for now. Again, I'll you know do like an, an actual two or whatever in the future, but I'm not gonna do that now. Uh Bugger CLI, yes. That makes sense. Um, yeah, so let's see, I need like a break. A break instruction. So break and then just the index. I think that makes sense. And that's where it'll stop at. Um, because we don't have labels that are embedded into the bytecode at the moment. Not at the moment. Mm -hmm. So let's let's just We kind of need to read it first. When you smush, uh, wait. Just remembered when I submitted push-ups and said you need to do them after the next that's, and you said it in the next sentence, Bruh. Hmm. You're back. Welcome back. Do you have the sources now? So I need to read this first. Otherwise, we start displaying stuff. So I want to actually load it before. So I can add, um, it's going to be, and we'll pass the machine and the, uh, the sauce, yes. 
Shin and the Well, I could move this into there as well. And I don't have to pass the command. But, and then we'll set it the for that. That's how we'll set it. And I think, I don't think there's anything else that we need to return. Because we're just outputting stuff pretty much. So, grab all of that. I uh, went too far. I got all the way now. I will come back. Um, so let's go here. Put it right here. Mm, okay, this will be. Especially not here. It's going to return a DP. Ah, uh, it's the DP command. Something like that. I don't remember exactly. Uh, machine, machine, and then that's it. So, encounter Kano bugs in the editor itself. Ah, uh, yes, I have quite a few times. Um, there has been a few like big bugs, major bugs where it will segfault and stuff, but I haven't had one of those in quite a while. Um, most of the issues are like, ah, uh, you copy and pasting, it's slow, things like that, which I did actually fix that. And now I actually have a bug that's in the current, uh, the latest version of Ganos, that's why I'm not using it. It's a bug that uh, actually causes a big issue where it crashes. Uh, no, they've not been all neutral. But that is because I was rewriting stuff, and that's why it crashes. And I haven't gotten back around to fixing it. So, so yes. Debug commands. And then, yeah, we want to return. And yeah, get rid of all of this stuff. Create uh, an instance of any class in Python, either a custom one or a built-in one. What you get is some kind of a wrapper that has a hash map that maps each individual piece of data to the class. When you use foot up our syntax, the interpreter actually does is does it really? So uh, let me try it. Can't do it like this. I class test. Remember how to do this? Hang on. So then I uh, can. That's the self there. S equals 12. No, self dot that. Mm. Right, but now I don't have the uh, thing. But yeah, what if I do, well, hang on. I forgot to. Got to make the other one. Okay. Next. Well, and then def um test. Print hello. Uh that's two equals test two five. Test two dot test. It does not work. Wait, what? Oh, I didn't provide the self? Oh, you do it like that. Oh, wait, what? Oh, shoot. Um, you go to bed now. Have a good one, Stamp. Have a good one. Yes, I'm not very good at fighting, so I mess it up, I think. But this text. Mm, anyway, well, test three. Uh, so, I don't need to actually do that. So, Okay, do that, and then test, and this needs the self, and then test. Okay, and then create test three, test three, and it did, okay, and test three dot test is that. Okay, so test three, test, does not work. Object is not scriptable. That's the right syntax, right? Bruh, am I doing it wrong? Or is it, um, is that not? Is it as a string? Yes, I need that. I can do this. Mm, the name as a string, yeah. Mm 
and tries to index that. Doesn't work. Okay. I do not, it's not work. I don't know why it's not working, but there must be something in between the brackets. Um, do I need to put something else in there? Like, I don't know what else. Send you the source. Okay, perfect. I will work on this one. Either. Don't need that. Get rid of this now, because that should all be handy. Uh, Go. Yes, we said that, and everything else should be there. Uh, debug command. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so it's supposed to return a value, so we'll just put. Hmm. Let's say. Let's return an integer. And I can still do that, and then if it's negative one, then we'll do that. So let's make printed equal. We can use it the same way, so because it's uh, the numbers. But then if it equals one, then it oops. Uh, foo like this dot not food hang on hmm okay I see so that does work uh, I just need to do it like this but... mm, that doesn't work why does that not work the value works, but not the, uh, the function. Yeah, it doesn't recognize that. <clears throat> doesn't recognize that one. Doesn't like that. Ah, uh, but the value does work, so I see what you're saying now. Uh, Printed uh, yeah, right there. Eight eighty six. That's interesting. I was not familiar with that. I right, undeclared. Okay. So we need pass I action. And now it should work. There's not going to be the next one, so, um, yeah, we need to pass i as a pointer so we can modify it. Uh, yeah, we could just return a structure or whatever, but I'm not going to do that. Some might be referencing, of course, but that's okay. Whoops. Yo, and that all works, and then when you print it out, there we go, in case that works, print that, we can view everything, that seems to work. Okay, so then, what was I going to do, what was the reason that I did that? Um, oh yeah, because I want to move that also above. Uh, dash B flag, wait here, just print the dict, you can see that, oh I see, okay. Dash B flag, oh that uh, reloads it without the cache in make, right, so if I do it um, just like this, just run make, it runs it and it uh, caches certain things. And because of how it's set up, this file um, gets cached and it doesn't recognize a change. So I need to, because it's a header file. So I need to reload it entirely, like recompile the entire thing. So that is why I do that. 
Mm, there's nothing there, but this one has a bag. So it only contains the those values. That's interesting. Pretty cool though. Always do it by calling make clean and then make. Well, I feel like that is easier to do dash b. Mm. So we can do this again. So it's like, you know, the initial state. So actually like that. There we go. Perfect. Hmm, so we need to print something initially. Okay. All right, yeah, yeah. so then we, then we can have the breakpoint. So that's what we need to handle then. So we need a break, which I have that here. It just breaks right now. Um. So basically, I just need to set... Uh, I need to read it like this. And get the size. Okay, we have the size, and then I just need to set by equal to size. Basically, well, it's not really size; it's um, index, right? Okay. Then um. That would be the breakpoint. It will be a specific index. Uh, I saw this thing about hash maps when you were into language development and you were looking at the source code of Python and V8 JavaScript. Hmm. Let's see. How is V8 JavaScript? How is the, uh, how's the code for that? How's it implemented? What's some weird stuff that you know about from that? Back. Oh, shoot. Okay, so we need to actually execute all the instructions. So. JavaScript must be even simpler because when you create an object, you can literally call it the yeah yeah for sure. V8 is the JavaScript VM. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah, JavaScript. It's all like lit quite literally objects, right? To uh, that's no good. JavaScript is not a language. Let's be honest. It's a tool to impress non-tech people. That's kind of that's kind of fair. Uh which one is it? This one's not. It's gonna be a pause game. So why is that one in it? Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I should check to make sure it is positive, but. Okay, wait, and yeah, so the stack, is that right? Hmm, yeah, because we duplicate it, so then if we do that, it's gonna change where the stack is, so we can look at all that. And yeah, so it does actually execute it properly. So we can do uh, disassemble. We can look at that, and we can break on, say, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, let's break on this one. So this was eight, right? Oh, and it just goes right to that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the real place where the tech people get impressed is when you write a virtual machine from scratch in C. Mm, I don't know. Not particularly impressive, I don't think. I mean, a big complex one is, but you know. Mm, probably more impressive, more impressive than a React website. React Hello World website. Uh, right. Yes, that did actually work. Oh. Um, UI it's still not great, but that's fine. It's good, it's good. Whoops, node, node mentioned. Mm. On indexes. Oh, that's a bit. Hello world program and rust. Real, real. Okay, let me let me let me pull that up. Rust is hmm. Rust is a language, that's for sure. Okay, that one doesn't look very good. 
Ah, uh, very impressive. Let's see, is there a good one? A good looking one. Okay. Yeah, I guess this doesn't uh doesn't look very impressive. I can pull it up right here. Uh this this when it when it's like this, it doesn't. It looks maybe a little confusing with the exclamation point, you know, the exclaim mark, if you don't know what it is. Uh but yeah, once you get into some other stuff. Rest is kinda hard, not gonna lie. Like this kind of stuff, you know, like I get what it's doing, but these always throw me off in any language, you know, when I'm not used to it. Also, the error messages are scary. So the dry solid approach to the hello world problem in Rust or yeah, if you have a link. I'm going to try to find it, but if you have a link. Let's see, what is this? In Rust. The bay. Mm, you happen to have a link. Because so I have this one, but this is not. I think this is C++ it looks like. Also, flashbang, flashbang. What the heck is this? This is, okay, that's the thing. Uh, mm, flashbang again. Flash banged. It's in programmer memes. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Uh, Reddit mode? Let's mess that up bad. Programmer. Hang on, I'm going to try to find it and then I will. Uh... Are you sure it was programmer memes? Because uh, this one is, uh, it has 67 members. Is it programming memes, perhaps? That's a bit larger. Yeah, if you find it, I'll, I'll continue working on it. And then if you find it, you can let me know. Uh, yes, indeed. Mm, it also can't go over the sides. Alright, well, let's check that first, actually. It's less than a uh, machine. That's not count. And it's, okay. Programmer human. Okay, I see. Yeah, so just, it just ran the whole thing. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. No. Okay, thanks for all that. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Whoops. Mm, all right. That one. Okay. <clears throat> uh, right. So really, without symbols, this is most of what um most of what you would want, I think, at least for me. Um. Because it's not anything else I would print. Because not variables in the assembly. Uh, so we're just looking at the stack is what we're printing. That's how you interact with everything. So that's not really not an issue, right? Um, we can get the stack size. And quit, obviously. Um, yeah, break points. It would be nice to have labels, but I don't want to do that yet. So uh, they spam the crash like memes playing Microsoft, after which he wanted to leave the subreddit. Because poor Bill Gates didn't do anything. He doesn't even... Uh, He's not even, like, affiliated with Microsoft in any way, except he owns the stock, right, at this point. He's kind of funny, though, sometimes. I mean, you know, beating a dead horse or whatever. But, um, a little bit of it can be funny. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yes, I think what I'd like to do is actually make a function for this. Mm -hmm. Print operand. Called the globalized world? What do you mean? And then that just... Oh, it doesn't set anything, right? So that's all that we need.
Let's actually just pass uh, machine. Well, yeah, we'll see that. Machine and I. Uh, one company produced a no pointer bug, which is taking down airports, bank systems, and more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is that is a thing for sure. Mm. Quite unfortunate. Quite unfortunate that that is a thing that, that can happen, you know? Make the pop right. It's got to go up here. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? So that's messed up all of the invocation. Cool. I don't want to spend that. It's fine. There we go. Okay, so let's do uh, machine. Oops. Machine, machine. Alright, okay. Let's do that. So, print. Get rid of all this now. To this point. And then I'm going to do the same thing up here as well. This is different. Oh, yeah, that's a different. Okay, so right here. So, like that. Probably lost some market share. Uh, yeah. Probably a lot of people are going to be using something different now. Um, it seems quite likely. I haven't looked into it too much. I don't know that has to do with, right, obviously Microsoft and things like that. What is this? Is there an extra one? Let's see. Right, but is it something where like Linux or something like that could be replacing it? Uh, will Kano be able to link with C libraries? Kano or Kano script? Kano script, you meant. Okay, um, yes, and it already can to an extent, right? So I have, um, right here, if you have a shared object file, so I have the way label here, and then I have a game right here. Uh, did not work, so it crashed. Um, I don't know why it would have crashed. And let me see, there should be one that works. Mm, when it can script it? Yes, I've been working on that, yes. Um, so you can do that. I'm not sure why that crashed, but it should work. One of them worked, but I don't know what happened. What's this one? Right, if it's in here, I can show... Yeah, so I don't know why it crashes there. Apparently something's completely broken. Uh, I wasn't like that before, so I don't know what happened. But yeah, so if you you have to write things like this, um, it has something to do with structs or whatever. Uh, yeah, basically DLL is the keyword, it's so like a dynamic linked library, and then the name of the shared object file. So it has to be in the same directory, um, and it dynamically links with it, right? So it doesn't compile or anything like that. Um, and then yeah, you have to write wrappers for each of the functions. Um, but then it generates C code. Um, to basically well, it generates the uh. Then uh, a file which sort of interacts with the virtual machine, right, through C, right? So it's like the intermediate. So it kind of um, creates some extra files that um, would probably be better to be like embedded into the white code, but I haven't done that yet. So it gets uh, it generates of quite a few things. Like I have lib raylib, and then it generates this one, which is like the wrapper for it. Uh, C strings, P strings, Kano strings. Um, C strings. Uh, yeah, C strings. I don't think they're size at all. So that is what I'm using. I considered using um, size strings, right? Uh, where you have the size. So like Pascal, right? That's what it is, I think. Um, and then also it has an old termination at the end. So that you have sort of both. So Because it's going to be interacting with C a lot. So I wanted C strings. Um, but then also it's nice to be able to just get the length immediately. So I thought about using both. P strings, yeah. Pascal strings, yes. Mm, but right now it's just C strings and old terminated. Mm, so you type in more than one character, then it will do that. Uh, PC strings, yeah. I think Odin has something like that. I might be wrong. I might be wrong on that. 
uh, cuts out the ability to make string, pri pri string processing programs, perhaps. I don't know. I haven't done it. Right, so right now it's just C strings. Uh, I think Odin has something like that, though. I might be wrong on that. Uh, Paulo, thank you for following. I appreciate that. Very cool. I thought I heard some guys, but I might be wrong. We can get the length. Uh, what does that do? Hmm, okay, so maybe it's not. Yeah, I guess it's not. I thought it was, but it is not. So I guess they're no permanent as well. What language is this? The language that I'm working in is C at the moment. I'm working on something for my program language. Um, basically, I'm writing a debugger. So similar to something like GDB, if you've heard of that, uh, where basically you step through the instructions in a program and you can sort of see values while it's running, essentially. Is C like CSS? Uh, not exactly. So not really at all, um, I should say. So C is a, um, it's really a systems program language. C is like C. Yes, yeah, very helpful. Uh, C. So here it is. Um, CSS is for styling, right? So if you write HTML, you write CSS to change the color of something or the position, I guess, things like that, right? C is a program language for logic, essentially. So you write logical programs that do things. Uh, so you can actually read about it here. There might be some things, but you can see it looks like uh, looks like this. So I don't know if you used, say, JavaScript, um, which is more related to CSS. Uh, it's more similar to that. Right. Something that maybe is understandable. So there's the Wikipedia page for the program numbers. This is the one that I'm using, this one. Ah, uh, but yeah, so it is quite different. A styling markup language. Yes, no problem. Uh, right. Yeah, so this is some of the syntax, right? That is what I'm using. It's not, not CSS. A bit different. Bump the desk, my bad. Mm, okay. That okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. I don't know. I gotta go pretty soon. Ah, uh, that's pretty good though. You know, I'm kind of happy with it at the moment. So you know, in the future, obviously symbols, so that we can actually break, say, break out main or whatever. If you have a function, something like that. In this case, there actually is no function, so that wouldn't work. But so we have the main function returns void and it just writes hello we don't call it at all it's not going to call it so it's called mm, and it does do that if i run this i still want to look at the it's a symbol uh yeah we have this and i think there is yeah this no construction is like um a label so i need to replace that with a label and that'd be good uh what you could do is make sure it's more portable which you might want to do is to first create objects and make KinoScript unbased. When you do, you will be hands. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have object-oriented programming now. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think I'm kind of fine with where it's at now. Mm, you know, with the no terminating strings, no object-oriented anything, nothing like that. There's structures, and that's it. There's no methods, um, no operator overloading, anything like that. You know. I don't want to add too many features as well, you know, scope creep. So I want to keep it very contained with what the purpose of it is um, so that I can actually more quickly get it to a usable point. Ah, uh, yeah, real, real. Because um, I have, like, you know, uh, I've got the vision, you know, and it's mostly, most of the features are sort of there. They're just kind of, um, they're not implemented very well, to be honest. I've learned a lot since I've started this project. So I need to go through and refactor a lot of stuff. Specifically the structs, because the structs have a lot of problems, and that is what creates a lot of the issues for the game that I've been trying to make. Um, but yeah, once those struct issues are figured out, there's just a few more features. Like, I'd like to have enums, probably, would be useful. There's constants at the moment, so you can do const. Um, actually, you do it like this. So, uh, L, I can't do L, okay. Const int equals 12, and then you can't change it, right? Like that and I'm going to do k equals 15, it's going to give an error. Yes. Uh, so it's common. So uh, you don't necessarily need enums, I guess, but I still, I would like to have it. I feel like it would be useful. Uh, type annotations. What do you mean? Type annotation. That is like um, fake types, right? Because these are real types. 
I don't know what that means anymore. Hang on, I have to look at it. I'm not familiar with Tom. Uh, I don't know what I don't know what it is. I mean, flashbang on the side monitor. Invitation or means of attaching metadata to code. Oh, it's for class class stuff. Oh, I see. Okay, I see what it is. Okay, it's like this. These kind of things. Yeah, none of that. Okay. Yeah, no, no, uh, no. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce the first part of your name, so I say vector. Vector followed. I appreciate that. Mm, okay. Yes. Mm, so we got that pushed, and it did chat pass the checks. That's cool. All right. What else? Um. Yeah, I, I got got it. Um, I feel like it'd be usable now. Let me try to run it on this game. That right. does not work anymore for some reason. So let's, let's do this. Ooh, okay. Print operand failed. So I wonder what that is. But you can see this is what the bike code actually looks like. We push all the strings and we load the library. I don't know if that's efficient really. Why does this fail? So we shouldn't uh one of the types are not there. Oh shoot, I know why. Yeah, okay. That's an issue actually. Um we don't handle all the types in here. Ah, uh, so it failed. W logo for real, for real. Hmm. Texan, Texan made all the all the logos for any of my Kano things that have logos. Ah, uh, let's see. So I have Kano. Is that all I have? Yeah, I have. Yeah, okay. The other ones are other ones. Yeah, that's Texan as well, and I think Kano OS has one too. Yeah, so that's also Texan. Um, you can see very yeah, very original, very W. Ah, uh, yes, that failed because I need the other type too. So let me just do. Can't really just use the U8 type too. 90% of textures, blocks, and items in Minecraft are done by you. W, entities included. Okay. Can't wait for it to be done. That's going to be very cool. Mm -hmm. So you're like the art person? Uh, put it up here. U16, U32, and I'll just put this one here for now, but it's not going to work there. But I need, um, I need another one for outside integer, but for now, it should be able to do that. And that should fix the issue. Yeah, okay, so then it actually did the properly. So it's not going to, I need to fix that. Oh, uh, is that Arch Linux? Yes, indeed. Yes, it is. Right here, Arch Linux. Also, you can see... It's gonna make you popular to so become a Minecraft streamer instead. Hmm. I messed that made up specs. And it does not work. So come on it down. What the heck? There we go. There it is. The most base distro, real. So that is the specs, and you can see our slant by the way. What NeoFetch was it? This was uh P fetch. P fetch it's called. It's like minimal NeoFetch. I have the fetch. Uh right there, yeah. That's the NeoFetch, that's the P fetch. There we go. I'm gonna read this. Look at this. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see this is what the actual assembly looks like. So yeah, I have 500. That's actually not too many. This is kind of inefficient how that's done. I need to fix that. Uh, fast action set. Yes. If I run that though, it uh reads the IP because it uh displays that. I think. Yeah. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run that. Uh, here's some of the values that it pushes. So yeah, I can use the debugger to actually. I don't know if they'll right now, but I can use it to walk through and see where it actually fails. So we load all the libraries, and it's actually loading, so that's cool. You can, feel, you can see all the libraries being loaded. Uh, fast patch displays too many info. It might, essentially might, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 120.0, I think you meant 0 .0, 0 .0, 0 0, like, uh, like that. Ah, uh, but yes. True. It, something else I need is, that should be the previous command when you just press enter. Uh, when it doesn't need anything. Yeah, so here's all the stuff being pushed. I want to see where it actually fails at. It actually opens the window. There's a lot of stuff here. 
127.0.0.1 is your localhost IP. Yes, real. Hmm, something I'd like is to be able to print the current instruction. That could be. That's what the static looks like. A lot of setup papers on here. Mm. Taking a moment. Taking a moment. And I'll put it three. I'm going to go after this, by the way. It will be uh, the end of the stream. Set up manually when you're selling Arch Linux system from scratch, you uh, following the wiki guide. Wow. We're doing your own programming language. Yes, yes indeed. So that is what the debugger is for my programming language. Um, right, so I'm not sure right, how much uh, how much you know about that, but I have a virtual machine, which is basically just a program that emulates a computer, essentially. Um, right, so I have that, and it has different instructions like a computer would have. And then I have a programming language, which will basically compile or you know transform the code into that virtual machine what it can understand there the list of instructions like that and then it goes through and it emulates that it um interprets it emulates it however you want to say it so it runs each individual instruction and that is how it works basically uh java yeah java does something similar to that yes so java has a java java virtual machine which is similar right it's not um the design is not very similar necessarily to mine uh, because of how it works but it's a similar idea where you have a virtual machine which has um instructions and then you have a language which compiles into that into those instructions basically so yes yes you would be right in saying java is similar to that i'm gonna get to the point where we actually uh call the native function let's do that okay then it open it let's keep going And you can't really see it. Can I do like... Oh, that's not what I wanted. How do you do... It's like that. I think it's like that. Yeah, there we go. So now let's stay on top. I like it. Alright, we're not getting any more instructions. So it just initialized the window. And that's not what it failed. So. Then there's more setup it has to do. Once we get to another native function, it'll be well, not function necessarily, but instruction. Oh, there was another native function. I don't know what it did. It didn't help me. Okay, health. So here's the window. It initializes it. This is all in Kano script, right? It calls to C code. Pro wants to create his own Minecraft mod launcher with his own API, remapper, and fancy things. Huh. That sounds like a fun project, but it sounds pretty hard. Yeah, okay, and there it just failed. So it failed at this one. So this instruction here. Oh, shoot. Did it jump to the wrong thing? Actually, open this. I'm uh, going to here. So I, I do have to go in just a moment, but I will look at what this is. So let's go to uh, 277. How many of those do we have? There's the one. So it was right here where it failed. So there's uh, two natives there, and it was right at the end actually, so that's interesting. It just ended. Um, seems that the wall loop might not have been compiled properly. Uh, harder than, than creating Kano script, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll, I'll look into that. Is there anything here? Oops, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, okay, it's some stuff, sure. Yeah, so I do have to go. Uh, that could be a, that could be a fun project, but yes, it does sound hard. Um, you have your own text editor too? Yes, I do indeed. Oh, oh, you have, yes, uh, it's called Kano right here. So, you know, I kind of have a naming scene going on. But there it is, if you're interested, here's the thing I was working on today. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have a text editor, which I use to write, um, not only the code for the text editor itself, but also to write the code for my programming language. And then I'll, in the future, the programming language will be used in the text editor to like customize it and stuff. So I'll be writing using the text editor. I'll write the program language that I made using the text editor. And I'll be writing um, the code for the text editor in the program language. Right. So it's like a like a circle kind of thing. 
I, I kind of butchered the explanation, but I think you get what I'm saying, hopefully. Based, for real, very based. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I, I have to go. I have to go now. In the section. Mm, yes. Most base dev. I don't know about that. Nice stream, bro. When you live again? Um, I should go live tomorrow. Um, tomorrow. Uh, let me think. So, yeah, it'll probably be around the same time. It might be a bit earlier in the day. Uh, or around the same time. Uh, yes. But thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yes. Goodbye, Cactus. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good one. See you next time.